On the table today, we're checking out They Who Were Eight. Hey gang, welcome back to Let's Level Up. My name is Rick Perez, and today we're going to be talking about They Who Were Eight from Passport Game Studios and Ludi Creations, a game designed by Todd Sanders. Now this is a game for two to four players, takes place uh, in a... Um, a really interesting, almost 70s style culture where we're all gods and goddesses and uh, we're basically trying to amass the most glory in order to be declared the winner. Uh, now this is a very cutthroat game and there's a lot of interesting take that and drafting elements that go into its play. Um, I will say, don't let the aesthetics of this game fool you. Uh, it almost did me on our first play, but once you get past the way the game looks, there is a really, really strong core mechanic here that I find very, very uh, satisfying. Uh, this game is going to be able to play anybody ages 12 and up, and uh, we're going to take it to the table now, show you how it works, and then give you our final thoughts. All right, They Who Rate comes in a very nice package here. Um, it is a small, portable. I really like games of this size because they're the kind of games, especially for the time limit, this is going to play in about 20 minutes. Um, you can get multiple sessions, so you fill up your backpack with one of these, head over to your buddy's house, and show them a lot of different kinds of games here in these smaller boxes, so I really appreciate it for that. Um, let's go ahead and open and take a look at the components and kind of get things set up for a three-player game. All right, in They Who Rate, we have just the right amount of components here. We've got our rule booklet, which is very thin, very easy to read, teaches you the game uh, very easily, which I really like. Um, we've got a couple player aids here. We've got a list of all the deities that we're going to have. We have our playing cards here, which are oversized, kind of tarot-sized cards. Um, you can see there. And then we have our uh, glory and infamy uh, pools that we're going to be able to have our gems in. Uh, now, let's explain a bit and during the setup of how this is going to work, and it all functions around these gods. All right, let's quickly go through the gods and their abilities, and we'll explain more throughout the course of this video. First god we're going to look at is the Lost Praxis. Now, his ability says, use his power at the start of the round to make Praxis immune to effective card, action cards for the rest of the game. So when we do that, we're going to flip them over again, it's going to leave him with an infamy, and we'll discuss that more later. I'm going to go ahead and set him down. Uh, the next up we have the Ever-Twisted Aristophane. Uh, and forgive me if I butcher the names of these gods. Uh, we swap the glory and infamy tokens of any two gods here. Uh, very, very strong ability that can really uh, swing the tide of the game. We have the bold Endin uh, excuse me, Endemina. Uh, and this one says, before you play your next turn, you may draw two new cards from the draw deck and then discard two cards. So again, we're going to cycle some cards there. And then we have He Who Is Nanos. Uh, this one says, you may keep the current action card in your hand instead of passing it at the end of your turn. Instead, the player to your left passes the card to the player to your right. Um, so it's going to allow us to, again, manipulate what's going on. If we have a really strong card that we don't want to pass, we can use this ability on Nanos. Uh, then we have Simile, uh, She Creates. Before the renewal phase begins, look at the top four action cards of the draw deck. Choose one to add to your hand. And then we have Raimon, The Uncaring. Uh, redirect your action card played yet uh, to uh, excuse me redirect an action card played upon you to another player of your choice then we have Piton the wandering uh, Piton says you can use the power of any god that has not already been used a very strong ability there and then Anatok the unseeing Anatok the unseeing says before a player of your choice chooses a card to play shuffle all cards held by all players and then deal them out again and then Kasana, who, uh, who was loved. If, the player, if any player has, has more than four glory tokens on one god, add one glory token to any one god of your choice. You're going to wait to be able to distribute uh, more glory there. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to shuffle these up, and then each player is going to get two gods. And we're going to do this kind of randomly. So we have, we have Anatok the Unseeing. We have Cassandra, who was loved. Pitsan. Sulemi, or Simeli, Simeli, <laughs> oh goodness, all right, each player is going to receive three action cards, and in this game, the oldest player is going to go first, so you see here, each player has two gods, one god on their left, one guard on their right, 
One thing that we really need to be mindful of are the symbols in this game. So uh, the artwork is very minimalistic here, and the symbology takes a little bit to get to get used to. So when we see a symbol that says this, that means we're going to move one glory token from one of their uh, one other player's god to a different player's god tile. Uh, this is going to be the same thing, but with an infamy token. This is going to be a swap one goal, uh, excuse me, one glory and one infamy token between two different player gods. This one is going to say move one glory and one inf inf excuse me infamy token um, from one of your god tiles to two other different players' god tiles. Uh, this one says regain the power of one of your god towers, excuse me, god tiles, and add two infamy tokens to that god. This one, uh, this last one here, says add a token from whichever type has the least amount uh, glory or infamy to any of the gods. And then we have target icons here, which are important. So this top icon means it's going to designate only you. This is going to be anybody but you, and this can be anybody there, depending on what symbol that you see there. And when we look at the different, uh, excuse me, action cards, besides the ones that we've already dealt out, here we have the compelling of, and then in so, uh, and so by their persuasion, right? So this is the compelling of the bold endemia. Or the compelling of he who is Nanos, right? Who you're going to be playing it on. So you're basically, you're telling this epic tale. And this is going to remove one glory and one infamy token uh, to anybody but you on the gods. This is the knowledge of, and this is the insight was gained when. Um, so this is going to be to, to give somebody a glory token. Again, meaning that this is the target area here. And this is the effect. Uh, this is the journey of. It is began with a single step. Uh, remove one glory, again, from anybody but us. And the weakness of. Add two infamy and one glory uh, to anybody but us. And then the jealousy of. Add two infamy. The treachery of. Add one infamy and one glory. And then finally the diplomacy. And this is that symbol again. We're going to move a glory from somebody. Right? So that's the idea of these cards. They have these symbols at the bottom of them and that's going to tell us what, who they're going to be played on and how. So let's take a look at our hand. So on our hand we have the conflict of, which is we're going to basically, basically give somebody an infamy. We have the bargain of, which is going to be give somebody two infamy, and it has a little eye icon there. Uh, that means we get to regain the power token of our god if we want. And then finally, the gifting of, which is, again, take the least amount of what's left in the bowl. So we talked about moving these tokens and whatnot. When we play a card, we're going to do just that. So when we add, let's say, the conflict of, we play that card, we're going to, put, excuse me, we're going to produce an infamy token on another player's god. Now, what does that mean? So anytime one of these stones gets assigned to a god, whether it's basically, uh, excuse me, whether it's because a stone is there or because they've used their god power and they have a permanent stone attached to them, um, anytime an infamy stone is attached to somebody, it's going to be minus one points. A glory is plus two points. So right now, this god would have a collective zero points. Now, this all has to deal with determining who the winner is. So the game immediately ends when all of the either the infamy tokens or all of the glory tokens have been used in the supply. Now once that happens, you're going to calculate a dominant pair of gods. Now each god pairing happens to deal with two players, two different players, and their right and left gods respectively. Now in order to find the dominant pair, we have to look at each, uh, excuse me, each player's uh, gods independently. My left god gets matched with my player to my left's right god. My right god gets matched with the player to my right's left god. So each of these gods are two different players. This one belongs to me. This one belongs to my opponent. This is my god. This is my opponent's god. This is my left player's god. This is my right player's god. Now, each of these pairings of gods is going to be a pair. Uh, so my right god, again, pairs with my right player's left god. Hopefully that's making sense. Now, uh, when you find your dominant pair, or rather to find your dominant pair, you want to count all of the glory and infamy tokens here on each god as a total. So I have two, four, six points, minus one, 
five points on Anatok. There is negative, negative two points, and basically this one would make it zero. This one is going to be a positive two. So together, we have seven points on that god, uh, excuse me, on this pair. There are zero points here, and there are two points on this pair. So our seven pairing here is going to be the dominant god. Now, again, the game is going to immediately end when one of these balls are taken. So you really have to be paying attention to what's going on here on the table and making sure you're not passing cards around um, that other players don't get. Or rather, the other players can't benefit from. So once we have determined that our, uh, our, we have a dominant pair here, whichever player has the god with the lowest total score is going to be declared the most selfless god and thus the winner. So in this one, Bold Indemina would win this one with a score of two versus my five. So there is a really interesting balance here. We have to be able to get points on our god pairs to be able to be considered for the win, but we don't have too many because if we outshine our other god, we will lose the game. So we want to be able to be selfless. So keeping infamy on your god is not necessarily a bad thing. All right, after everybody has played a card, we're going to go on to the renewal phase. And you'll, again, you'll keep doing this until one of these pools has been discarded. But the renewal phase goes in two ways. So this card has been played. I still have these two cards in my hand. Uh, we're basically going to take one of our two remaining action cards in our hand and pass it to the player to our left. So we will be getting an additional card that way. Then we're going to change the starting player. Then we're going to shuffle all the cards in the discard deck to form a new draw deck, and then everybody draws a card from the draw deck, so that way we have three cards again. Uh, and the game is going to be keep, excuse me, going to keep being played again until all of these uh, beads from one of these banks is over, and then we're going to determine who the most selfless god is by finding our dominant pair. And in a nutshell, that's how you play they who were eight. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth in this game. A lot of things that you're going to have to have constant reminder of what's going on in order to make sure you're going to be declared uh, the most selfless god. You want to be able to stack points, but not too many points because then uh, you'll go overboard. So let's head back to the table. I'm going to give you my final thoughts here about they who were eight. Well, that is it for they who were eight. Now, our final thoughts, this is a very, very good game. Um, but it it's, doesn't necessarily have the graphical polish that we would expect out of a game being released this year. Um, and one of my friends, when they were looking at the game, they said, hey, it really has a, like a 70s home decor look to it. And it does. And I think that kind of, it kind of lends itself to the theme of the game, and that they we're weaving this tale about these gods and goddesses and trying to gain glory and, and, or infamy uh, and, and put, uh, put the right stones in the right spots, right? Uh, in um, it works at the end of the day, but it can be a pretty difficult hill to overcome. I'm one of those kind of people that as long as the game's strong, I'll basically play anything. I know a lot of people where the graphically this is going to be a problem for them. Now that's not to say don't give they who are eight a try. You've seen what it looks like here on the table. Um, again, it is a very, very strong game for three players and even teams of two um, if you're playing four players. Um, I think it really, really shines on either one of those makeouts, uh, or rather the compos table compositions there. And overall, it's one of those games that is very, very rewarding when you make the smart plays. And it also, uh, to flip that coin on its head, it's another game that really punishes you uh, for not making the right plays. Um, whether you pass the wrong card to the right person uh, and they were able to really bank off what you gave them or you just didn't see something happening on the other side of the table and ended up costing yourself the game. Um, you really have to be cognizant of what's going on. And of course, in a free-for-all, uh, table politics are going to be a huge part of this game. And that's one of my favorite parts about any board game or tabletop game is being able to play the players of the game. Uh, they Who Were is no exception to that rule. Very strong mechanically. Again, I can't stress that enough. There's a really, really fun game here. Uh, so don't let my, my words about how the game looks and how the game feels uh, detract you from the overall message. Very, very strong. I highly recommend you guys take a look at this and check it out. It is a blast, and especially if you're playing with a game uh, with your normal game group, if they're anything like mine where they're very cutthroat uh, <laughs> and they really are competitive, uh, They Who Rate is really going to shine there. Uh, so take a look at it. Become a god. Become a goddess. Uh, try to gain the most glory as you can. Spread infamy out to those who disbelieve. And uh, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time...
game on.